This is the case of a 56-year-old male who had uh, presented to the hospital with a two-week history of headaches. He presented with an episode of worst headache of his life days uh, before. His past medical history is significant for an aortic uh, coartation. He had a thoracotomy at the age of 17. He has uh, sleep apnea and he presented with an exam, normal neurological exam in Glasgow 15. The patient is in the supine position, a right femoral axis established, six French arterial sheet was placed, and a six French envoy catheter is navigated into the left vertebral artery. After, later in the case, a second axis is established from the contralateral left femoral artery in order to have the transcirculation approach. On this angiogram, it's a left vertebral injection. We can see a wide neck, irregular uh, basilar tip in rhythm. On the three-dimensional angiography, we can see uh, the same wide neck aneurysm. Our initial plan was to have a balloon-assisted coil embolization, having a balloon coming from the right vertebral artery and doing the coiling from the left side. We attempt this in multiple opportunities. Since it was a wide neck aneurysm, it was necessary to have the support uh, of the balloon in the neck. We use a high-performed balloon that was placed from the basilar artery into the right PCA and a microcatheter was advanced into the aneurysm and posteriorly the aneurysm was attempted to recoil. Despite moving the balloon into a more proximal location trying to cover the left side of the neck of the aneurysm, there was persistent herniation of the coil mass compromising the ostium of the left posterior cerebral artery. We establish another axis, secondary axis, through the left femoral artery. A six-French envoy catheter was advanced into the left internal carotid artery, and after demonstrating adequate calibre of the posterior communicating artery, we navigated a hyperglide balloon from the left internal carotid artery through the left posterior communicating artery into the left P1, P2 segment, spanning the neck of the aneurysm and landing the balloon covering the neck of the aneurysm into the right P1 segment. Know that at this point we proceed with the coiling. The coiling is uh, through the left vertebral artery and the balloon is coming from the left internal carotid artery. On this uh, roadmap you can see the impression that is left on the balloon that has been used when the balloon is inflated on the right side on the unsubstracted view and we can see that the coiling goes through from the vertebral artery into the basilar tip aneurysm. On this sagittal uh, roadmap, we can see the progressive coil occlusion of the aneurysm with a down the barrel view, basically establishing the view from one PCA to the contralateral PCA. Once the balloon is inflated, you can see that the neck is completely protected. Finally, on this sagittal view, we have that once the coil uh, embolization is completed, the balloon catheter is deflated, the tail of this coil is unstable, waving, and protrudes into the basilar artery. When the contrast is injected, you can see that the tail of the coil protrudes and waves every time that there's um, an injection. At this point, it was considered this was a potential case for a thromboembolic phenomenon, especially with a bioactive coil. We decided to tack this coil tail into the coil mass using an stent for this purpose. In order to have that, we had um, the catheter that was uh, used before, the balloon catheter, and then we replaced that catheter over an exchange wire. We used accelerator wire inside the balloon, and then we were able to remove the balloon catheter, and over that exchange wire, we used a stent, stent delivery catheter. We used a neuroform and delivery system in order to have the same platform, the same trajectory for the stent that we have for the balloon. Finally, uh, on the left vertebral injection, we can see that the aneurysm is completely coiled and the stent is deployed from the left internal carotid artery. On this slide, we can see a sagittal view of the coil tail that is being tagged by the stent into the coil mass, and we can see the down the barrel view with the same perspective we had with the balloon through the stent. On the AP projection, we can see the horizontal stent crossing from one PCA to a contralateral PCA spanning the neck of the aneurysm. In the final angiogram, we can see that the left posterior communicating artery is a patent and on a follow-up MRA one year later, we can see that there is no evidence of residual or recurrent aneurysm on this projection.